Hey guys, welcome to Get Busy Watching. I'm your host, Honest Dan. Let's talk movies. How long has this been available? So prior to quarantine, I actually was kind of looking forward to this. Never mind the fact that I do kind of enjoy a good rom-com now and then. I guess I enjoy a good anything now and then. But this did look like it had some decent comedy. Granted, it kind of looks a little identical to the 2010 film Date Night with Steve Carell and Tina Fey, but I've seen the rom-com with good-looking white people. How about a rom-com with some good-looking minorities? Hey, Hollywood. Also, yeah, I consider myself a casual fan of Kumail Nanjiani, and if her talent from the photograph is anything to go by, I'm curious to see what Issa Rae has up her sleeves. Reviews so far have been a little meh about it, but... I'm not exactly going in expecting the next Born Yesterday, or certainly the next It Happened One Night. I'm just expecting a nice way to kill off a couple hours. Let's see how it holds up. This is my honest opinion of The Lovebirds. Four years ago, Gibran, played by Kumail Nanjiani, and Leilani, played by Issa Rae, were a loving couple that hit it off really well. In the present day, however, their relationship has fallen to pieces, and on their way to a friend's party, they unexpectedly break up. The saddened news doesn't last long before Gibran accidentally hits a biker. Alive but not well, he refuses any help and desperately flees. As it turns out, a police officer immediately finds them and hijacks their car to pursue the biker. The biker is repeatedly run over and killed, with the killer fleeing the scene. A pair of passersby see the body of the biker, call the police, and Gibran and Leilani flee the scene. Full well knowing how bad the situation looks for them, they decide to try and solve the murder as to why the biker was killed in hopes of clearing their names, despite the dangers they'll surely face. It was about as good as I expected it. It's dumb, but you know what? Like I previously said, I wasn't expecting a game changer. I just wanted something entertaining. And you know what? That's exactly what I got. The one constant throughout the film is the fantastic chemistry between Nanjiani and Rei. If there's one great thing that is in this movie, it's how well they work off of each other. Their energy and comedic timing is what makes this movie. But diving deeper in, the relationship between Leilani and Gibran is very charming when we first meet them. It's awkward, but in an adorable kind of way. It's perfectly paced, giving us reasons to like the characters and their relationship taking its time but not giving us too much information that we get bored. It's only once the present day kicks off where things get a little muddied. The entire scene taking place in their apartment is a little hard to understand. While I knew there was a sense of hostility between them, I didn't know it was a full-on fight. I just thought because they were four years into their relationship, they were just roasting each other about nothing. Having a spirited debate about the amazing race and whether or not it's a good show, there's weird beats where they're giving each other crap, then suddenly mellowing out over something trivial as well. This back and forth honestly made it unclear where their relationship was at. It was made clearer in the next scene in the car. The hostility was plain to see, and then they spontaneously broke up. First of all, well acted, but this bit almost made the apartment scene useless. I wager you could have cut out that entire bit and it wouldn't have mattered. As a result, it probably takes a little too long to actually get to the plot of the movie, which is only about nine and a half minutes. If you really think about the plot, the movie should have ended at the diner after the lovebirds ran away from the crime scene as they ran through the scenarios dealing with the police. Why we run from the scene of the crime? We knew we looked guilty. You know, things like that. But here's an idea. Why not have forensics check the driver's seat for hair from the driver? That DNA will clearly not match either of the lovebirds. Or clothing fibers from his clothes that won't match what the lovebirds are wearing. Get a sketch artist and describe what the killer looks like. You'll have him immediately by the balls by that point. Or hell, the driver was wearing fingerless gloves, so his fingerprints are likely all over the steering wheel. There's actually quite a bit of evidence that's more than likely there to clear their names. For that matter, what cop would have civilians with him during a vehicle commandeering? He'd tell them to get out and there you go. The movie needs to happen, I guess. And once he kills his man, why does he leave witnesses? What murderer leaves witnesses who know his face? 
The whole situation falls apart when you give it five seconds worth of thought and is all basically an excuse to have hijinks with these two characters. As far as that goes, it does its job. Getting kidnapped by Anna Camp, assaulting a frat boy who's into some shady business connected to the dead biker, a sex cult. There's certainly an abundance of charm and entertainment to be found. Again, what makes this movie are the two leads who are just great. Yeah, it's probably not the most glowing review, but it's not that kind of movie that needs a deep dive. It's a date movie. And if that's your baggage, then I say go for it. There are worse ways you can kill off a couple hours. It's brainless, but it's serviceable for what it is. My honest rating for The Lovebirds, a 4 out of 5. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Stay safe and healthy out there. Hope to see you soon.